In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, solving linear equations. And first of all, what an equation is, and then some methods of uh, or strategies for solving what are called basic linear equations, first one-step and two-step linear equations. So first of all, uh, let's talk about a little bit of arithmetic and how it's used to solve equations. So this isn't an equation, it's just a, a mathematical statement, six plus five equals 11. Now, as soon as we replace uh, something with a variable, it becomes an equation. So for example, let's say instead of writing six here, I would x, x plus five equals 11. Um, we can look at it and say, well, all I did was I changed six into an x. So x must have a value of six because it's six that we add five, two to get 11. So this is an equation. An equation has uh, statements or expressions on both sides, and they're joined together as somewhere in the middle with an equal sign. Okay, that's an equation. Now, let's get rid of that. So let's say I'm going to rewrite this, except I'm going to change the six into two times three. Okay, because two times three is the same as six. So this is another uh, arithmetic uh, uh, statement. Two times three plus five equals 11. Now, um, so let's say I were to change this three into an X. So instead of writing two times three, I could write two times X or two X, that's the same thing, plus five equals 11. So that is a an equation. And uh, all we did was re I replaced the three with an X. So X should have a value of three because two times three is six, plus five does give you 11. That's called a check, and we'll get into that uh, in a couple of pages here. Now, solving equations uh, uh, is, is like using a balance. The equation has to stay balanced, and what that means is the value on both sides has to stay the same. So let's go back to the six plus five equals 11 one. If I put six plus five on one side and 11 on the other side, it's balanced because this is 11, this is a value of 11, and so does this. Now let's say I took a balance and I subtracted five from both sides here. Okay, so notice I'm doing the same thing to both sides. If I'm doing the same thing to both sides, you see that's 11 minus five would be six here and 11 minus five is six over here. So I did the same thing to both sides, it's still balanced. Let's say instead of subtracting five from both sides, let's say that I only subtracted it from the left side. So I've got six plus five, subtract five on the left and the 11 still on the right. Well, that's 11 minus five, that side's six, this side's 11, so it's no longer balanced. There's more on this side, so it's not balanced anymore. So to keep it balanced, you have to do the same thing to both sides. And subtracting isn't the only thing you can do. You can actually do any arithmetic. So let's uh, do another one. Let's say instead of subtracting five like I did here, uh, we had the six plus five on one side, 11 on the other, and I added three to both sides. Well, uh, that's 11 plus three is 14 on the left. And 11 plus three is 14 on the right. So I did the same thing to both sides it's still balanced, has the same amount on both sides. Uh, now I'm, I'm going to use a different example rather than just my uh, 6 plus 5 equals 11. So over here I'm going to use uh, 8 plus 12 on, on the left and 20 on the right. Uh, those two values are the same because 8 plus 12 does add to 20. Now let's say we're to multiply both sides by 3. And the reason I'm doing this example is because this is a, a common algebra mistake. So let's say I did this. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. Now, um, if you look at what's on the left here, and you have to remember to use bed mass whenever you're doing any arithmetic, add, subtract, multiply, divide, exponents, all that kind of stuff. And so the problem here is that up here, see, uh, we'd have to do the, the 12 times 3 first, because remember, you're going to multiply before you add. So 12 times 3 is 36. So that's 36 there. Now, the problem is 36 and 8 add to 44, and but 20 times 3 is 60. 
So it's no longer balanced. And, and the reason it isn't balanced is because I only multiplied the 12 by 3. I didn't multiply the 8 by 3. So in order to, I have to, in order to like multiply by 3 both sides, I have to multiply everything on both sides by 3. So it looks like this. Um, we want, I put the 8 plus 12 in, in, in brackets and see uh, uh, 3 times 8 is 24. So that's 24 there. Plus 3 times uh, 12 is the 36. And it's still balanced because 24 and 36 add to 60, just like 3 and 20 multiplies to 60. So it's still balanced. But Whatever you're doing, you have to do, like if you're multiplying or dividing, you have to do that to everything on, on that side, not just part of it. So let's uh, let's take a look at another one. Uh, I want to do like all the arithmetic operations. Uh, so I haven't done division yet. So let's say I had this true statement and I divide both sides by 2. So the 8 plus 12 gets divided by 2. The 20 gets divided by 2. And... So the next one, if I divide 8 by 2, I get 4. 12 divided by 2, I get 6. See, that's what that means. The 2 gets divided into both of those. And of course, 20 divided by 2 is 10. So it's still balanced because 4 and 6 add to 10. There's 10 on the left and there's 10 on the right. So it's balanced. I divided by 2 and I divided both parts, both numbers by 2. So it's still balanced. Now we're going to get into these four examples in a moment. Um, so I, I want to—I I mentioned bed mass. Um, bed mass is actually very useful for solving equations, and I'm going to do a little um, numerical example here for in a moment. Uh, so let's say I—I—I uh, I, I wrote uh, two times three plus five. So bed mass uh, now. Um, you'll, sometimes you'll see brackets in linear equations. You will rarely see any exponents. Okay, it's, it's not something you're going to see very much in, in linear equations, but you'll see a lot of division, multiplication, and addition or subtraction quite, quite a bit. So the operations I have here, I have multiplication and I have addition. So um, if I were to evaluate this, I would go 2 times 3 is 6. And now, so I did the multiplication. Now I'm going to add 5 to get 11. Now I can work back. Let's, let's pretend for a second I didn't know that that's a 2. I have something that I multiplied by 3 and added 5 to, and I got 11. So we could take this 11 and work backwards. So the last thing I did here was I added 5. So the opposite of adding 5 is to subtract 5. So 11 minus 5 is 6. So remember, let's pretending we didn't know that's 2. So we multiply by 3. So the opposite of multiplying by 3 is to divide by 3. So if I take that 6, divide by 3, I get back to the 2. So we use bed mass to evaluate expressions. We use bed mass in the opposite order to solve equations. So notice that um, I did subtraction first. See, normally we do addition subtraction at the end, the very last thing. I did subtraction first, and then I did division here. Division multiplication is done after you do any addition subtraction. So, uh, so Work using bed mass, but in the opposite order to solve equations is is a very useful strategy. Um, you can kind of think it like this: the the arithmetic followed bed mass to give you some number. See, so you undo all that arithmetic to get back to your solution, your answer. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, these examples. Uh, so it says solve each equation and check the solution. So I'm going to show you what a check looks like too. So x plus 4 equals 11. So this is this. what this equation means is I've got some unknown number that I'm adding 4 to to get 11. And a lot of these fairly simple equations, you might be able to use your number facts to find the answer without doing any particular strategies. And that's called solving by inspection, just using your number facts. You might say, well, I know what number that I add 4 to to get 11. I know it's 7. So that's a good way to sort of check your answer unofficially. Um, so um, in in equations, uh, what we want to do is, again, use, we use bed mass, uh, but in reverse order. See, we want to get the x alone or, or isolated. Isolated alone means the same thing. So right now, the x plus has 4, x has 4 added to it to give 11. 
I don't want to know that what x plus 4 is. I want to know what x is. So what we do is we're going to undo this add 4. So the opposite of adding 4 is to subtract 4. So all these opposite operations you come in, I've, I've done them all in red here. Now, a lot of you'll hear a lot of uh, teachers use the word cancel here. The 4 is cancel out. I don't really like that word. Great. Um, I, I know a lot of people use it. Really what's happening here is adding 4 and subtracting 4 or 4 minus 4 is 0. So those actually add to 0 and that's why there's only x left on the left side. So 11 minus 4 is, uh, is 7 so we think our solution is 7. So this is what the check looks like. So this is ls stands for left side. So this is the left side here x plus 4. So we're going to put our 7 right here. 7 plus 4 works out to 11. And you see the right side, there's nothing to evaluate. The right side is 11. So because we put the 7 in place of x here, and we evaluate this, and we got what's on the right side, then it checks. So uh, b here, uh, 4w equals 32. Now, 4w means 4 multiplied by w. So there's no addition subtraction here, but we're, again, we're doing the opposite. Uh, 4 multiplied by w, multiplying by 4, the opposite is to divide by 4. So we're going to divide both sides by 4. And again, you hear a lot of people mark those out and say they cancel. What happens actually is 4 divided by 4 is 1. That's why there's just a w or 1w on the left. And 32 divided by 4 is 8, so 8 is our solution. And we're going to check it. So what's on the left side of the original equation is just 4w. So we're going to put that 8 in place of w here. And 4 times 8 is 32. That is what's equal, what's on the right side. So it checks. Okay, by putting 8 in here, 4 times 8 does equal 32. So it checks. So now, C is called a two step equation because there's two steps to find what C is. See, C is multiplied by 2 here. That's what 2C is. And then 5 is subtracted. So there's two arithmetic operations. Now, um, we're going to. Again, work bed mass in opposite, the opposite order. So any addition subtraction, you do that first. So there's a, a subtract 5 here. The opposite of subtracting 5 is to add 5. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Again, here's that these cancel again. Uh, those, the negative 5 and positive 5 add to 0. So that's why there's just 2c on the left. And negative 13 plus 5 works out to negative 8. And then uh, 2c means 2 multiplied by c, so the opposite of multiplying by 2 is to divide by 2. Again, the 2s divide out, so we just get c on the left, and that would be negative 4. So here's our check again. 2c minus 5 is what's on the left. So we're going to put the negative 4 right here. So it's 2 times negative 4, and that's negative 8. Uh, subtract 5. Now it does, you see it does equal to negative 13. Okay, that's what's on the right side. So uh, by putting the negative 4, see, negative 4 is what makes that a true statement. 2 times negative 4 subtract 5 is negative 13. If, if I got some other answer here, like if I put, let's say I thought for some, let's say I missed the sign. I thought that, uh, I'll show you this in my calculator here. Let's say I missed the sign and I thought that C was positive 4. Okay, so if I went 2 times 4 subtract 5, notice that, it doesn't equal negative 13 because 4, positive 4, is not the right answer, okay, is not the solution. Okay, so uh, that's that's how the check works or it can show you that you made an error. Okay, last one here in D. Now, notice in this case there's x's on both sides. And um, what you want to do is use the these inverse operations in order to rearrange it so you have the x's on one side, the numbers on the other. Now, the next two steps can actually be done in either order. It doesn't matter. But the first thing I'm going to do is get uh, the x's on the left side. So I have a 4x on the right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. So 4x, the, uh, that will be 0 there. So 7x minus 4x is 3x. Uh, the, so it's the subtract 6 is still here. That's gone because that's 0. So 0 plus 3 is just 3. And then uh, this is now an equation very similar to C here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, I'm going to handle this negative 6 here, or subtract 6. The opposite of subtracting 6 is to add 6. So I add 6 to both sides. So that's gone. That's 0. So just 3x on the left, and that's 9. Uh, 
And then 3x means 3 times x, so we divide out the 3, and we get x equals 3. So now the check for these ones looks a little different. Uh, because there's expressions on both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the 3 back in place of x here. So it'll be 7 times 3 minus the 6. So that's 21. Subtract 6 is 15. Now, we don't have a 15 over here. We have a right side expression of 4x plus 3. So again, I'm going to put my 3 in place of x here. 4 times 3 is 12 plus that 3. Now notice he gave me the same value. As long as those are the same, then that is the correct solution. So that's a little bit about how you can use uh, inverse operations to, uh, to solve equations. And remember, it's really bed mass in reverse. And that's the end of the tutorial.